Hi, I'm Emma. I'm a certified Dubsado specialist. And in this video, we're going to talk about lead capture forms. So lead capture forms are, you know, you can see that they're in their own little column here in Dubsado. So what makes them different from the other forms in your account is that when this one is filled out, what it does is that it brings basically a new client and a new project into your Dubsado account. So if you share the link to this form or you embed it on your website and someone fills it out, they will suddenly pop up in your projects as a new client, as a new project. So that's the advantage. It saves you time from having to manually enter clients and projects into Dubsado. And you get to ask them questions that might be helpful for you when you're, when you're starting out or you're trying to figure out if this lead is a good fit for your business. So to create a lead capture, basically there's, there's a sample one in your account or you can start from scratch. So inside the lead capture, basically you're going to ask for the information that you feel is relevant at this point. This is probably before you've had a chance to talk to them. Um, so I would be hesitant to ask for things like address, even phone number, it's here, but it's not required. Um, if you do need certain information, be sure to explain why. So if you're asking for a phone number, you can put, you know, please provide your phone number so I can call you um, for our, you know, coffee chat or whatever you want to call it, okay? You can even pull a text box above here and add an explanation there. Data has shown that if you ask for a phone number at this early stage without explaining why or if you force it, less people will fill out this form, okay? They're, they're going to feel uncomfortable. Like, why do you need this? So if you're asking for something like a phone number, be sure to explain why. So the other thing inside of lead captures is that you can see that there's this field that says, um, this option here below that says field mapping. So basically what that is doing is connecting the response to a field in Dubsado. So in this case, first name, Dubsado understands now that this connection is made here, that this answer equals first name. If you go here, this answer equals last name. This answer equals email address. This answer equals phone number. This answer equals website, right? So if you have information that matches some of these mapped fields that you see here. So in the wedding industry, you might ask for uh, partner one and partner two's um, name and last name email. So you can put client first name for whichever is the first name in the form and then alternate contact first name and alternate contact last name for the other partner, okay? Then you can add more questions, right? How can we help? Um, you know, what, um, what help are you looking for? Um, if you have, if you're in the wedding industry, you can ask this and say, when is, when is your event, right? And you can tie this to start date or not. It depends. Um, that, that one's up to you because <laughs> if you're booked and all these things. So I wouldn't put it a start date necessarily at this stage because um, it will show up in Dubsado as a start date. So you may just leave it blank. And then later on, once you've aligned with the client and, you know, yes, we're going to work together, then you can ask them to like in the proposal to confirm the, the wedding date or the event date. And then that would be the project start date. Um, it's up to you. Um, the other, if you scroll down here, so you see these are all very similar options from other forms, right? Um, workflow is one that's um, good here. So basically, what service are you interested in? So you can put, you know, branding, and then you find a, a, one of your workflows. So this is for later on, like if you have workflows built, but just so you know, like, if you have different workflows for different services, so let's say for branding people, you invite them to a call. For other people, you send them directly a proposal. Um, so you can do these sorts of things and have different workflows. And based on what they want, what service they're looking for, you can point them down a different workflow, which is pretty awesome. Um, so, you know, web design. So you can select a different workflow um, or you can select the same one and then for one of them, you select something different. Okay, so if you have different options depending on services, this is the route that you would take 
if all of your options lead to the same path, you don't want to differentiate, what you would do basically is do that over here. So in the settings, in the gearbox, then you're going to decide what the workflow is that all the people that fill out this form are going to go down. Okay, you can put a thank you message. You can even put a redirect URL. So what that means is if in your website you have like a page with a video or whatever you want to redirect people to after they fill out this form, you can put that URL here. Um, you can add a status. So anyone who fills out this form is going to go into this um, status here that you have. Okay, so there's a video, separate video about project statuses. So if you create those and then you come and do this, you can select the, the statuses that, you know, make sense for people at this stage. You can even put a project title, okay? So you can say, you can just put, some people just put the client's full name, so name, last name. Um, some people, you know, differentiate in other ways. So feel free to do that. Um, and that's basically it, like having expiration dates on lead captures, like you want it to be active on your site, you want leads to come in. So expiration dates, um, I don't know, they don't make much sense to me for this type of form. Okay, so let's go back to the questions. Project tracking. So in the other video, also with projects uh, statuses, I talked about project sources. Okay, so you can force this one and ask people, what, where did they find you? So you can see all of these options are there now. Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Referral, Google. And that's great because it kind of tells you where people are coming from. So you get data around, you know, what um, lead source is the most efficient in your business. Um, so, you know, other questions that you can ask. Um, so if you don't want to use the workflow option for services that people are interested in, you could do the drop down, right? So, you know, what service? And then here you could ask web design, you know, branding, um, both, etc. Right. Um, so that would be a drop down. You can also do it in the form. You know, if you want them to select several options, you can do it here. Right. You can make it required and you can format it vertically. I recommend formatting it vertically. Um, it makes more sense. Like our brains are trying to read this way. So suddenly reading in the horizontal direction can be a little bit confusing. And if you have a lot of options, it can look really messy. I get that this makes your form longer, but um, again, this comes from data. And then let's see. And then if you have something that you want them to select one of, you can do it like this. Again, I would put yes first, no second, and I would format it vertically. You can style lead captures as much as you style proposals. Um, I generally, if, if they're being embedded on a website and how you would do that is over here, you would embed this code as a block inside of your website. So in Squarespace, you put a co code block, you copy this, you drop it in there. And when you preview, you'll see it pop up. Okay. And I have a separate video on how to embed. I keep it simple um, for that purpose. If you're embedding it, if you are doing a direct link, if you're sending people directly to this, then yes, style, you know, add all sorts of things. You know, you can add a container at the top, very top here. I would do something like this, right? And I'd put padding at the bottom to separate it a bit. So if you're sending people directly to the link, I would style away. If you're embedding, um, you can add the design elements directly in your website and keep your form simple. It's completely up to you, obviously. The last piece is that you can style your form so you can change all your fonts. You can change the font color, right? You can see it changing here. You can change the size, you know, whatever works for you. Um, you can uh, also change the button that appears in the preview. Right, so let's save and preview so you can see this. And this 
color comes from your branding uh, under settings, right? So this is like your your main brand color. So it so all of your buttons are going to be styled with that color. Okay. This obviously isn't the prettiest thing, but you get what I'm what I mean. Um, so yeah, and that's basically it. That's all you need to know for lead captures. Um, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.